Physics needs an object like a verb needs a noun. No, you can't replace the objects with a symbol or a sound, but that's what Einstein and Bohr did with space and time and light. So now the RSM is gonna set them right. Hi, my name is Michael Hutner, and welcome to another show where I discuss the rational scientific method. Today I'm going to be analyzing and explaining to you the biggest disconnect in quantum physics. And this is a literal disconnect. Quantum physics proposes that every atom in the universe is physically discrete. That means disconnected. There's nothing physically attaching them to each other or connecting them at all, really. They're, they're just particles floating around in the void. Now this is a huge problem for quantum and it causes them to run into a lot of challenges and it essentially sets them up to fail. There's no way that you can explain the phenomena of the universe with disconnected particles. So let's start this analysis with a quote by John Muir. John Muir says, when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find that it is bound fast by a thousand invisible cords that cannot be broken to everything in the universe. Now he was saying this in the 19th century. Was this poetry or is Muir trying to communicate a literal fact to us? Current scientific orthodoxy holds with unquestionable faith that the universe is made up of discrete particles. That is to say, each atom is a lonely island, a tiny orb that floats around in the void, disconnected and unrelated to every other lone particle in the universe. Not only do they wish for you to believe that the atoms are discrete particles, but so is every phenomena between them light, gravity, magnetism, electricity, these phenomena are all supposedly mediated by unattached, unconnected spheres. Even pure abstractions like time and space have been made into particle-like objects by these math magicians. But how can this possibly be the case? This discrete particle hypothesis makes it impossible to rationally explain phenomena known as action at a distance. How does an atom on the sun pull on an atom on the earth if they are disconnected? How does quantum entanglement work if there is no physical thing between the atoms to entangle them? Why does light sometimes appear to arrive before it is emitted? Why does gravity appear to act instantaneously across light years of distance? Because the math magicians of orthodoxy have set in stone a model of the universe wherein each object is physically discrete, these questions can never be answered. To answer these questions, we need only to read these beautiful descriptions of nature's phenomena written by scientists who lived long before the corrupting influence of quantum's discreteness. Now let me read you these quotes because these were done through the intuition of very intelligent people. And it's not it's not even a matter of intuition. This is a matter of a rational understanding that if there is some action going on at a distance, if something acts here and causes an action over here it is just intuitive it's common sense to understand that there must be something that bridges that gap that spans the distance between them so let me read you these observations these analyses done by great thinkers even quantum physicists of modern time make statements like these which directly contradict the quantum hypothesis. If we're supposed to believe that every atom in the universe is disconnected, 
then these observations don't make any sense. If light takes several years to reach us from a distant star, it is no longer on the star, nor is it on the Earth. It must be somewhere and supported by some material agency. Henri Poincaré, physicist, engineer, mathematician. Light furnishes, therefore, the principle of continuity in nature, for, as the first corporeal form, it is common to all things in the universe, from the lowest of the elements, earth, up to and including even the firmament. Thus, all things are one by the perfection of light. Robert Grossetesti. I think that's how you say it. Light and matter are both single entities, and the apparent duality arises in the limitations of our language. Nor is it divisible, such since it is all alike. Nor is there any more of it here than there, to hinder it from holding together, nor any less of it. But it is all a plenum, full of what is. Therefore, it is all continuous, for what is touches what is. He welded all the diverse parts of the universe by links of indissoluble attachment, and established between them so perfect a fellowship and harmony that the most distant, in spite of their distance, appeared united in one universal sympathy. The sun appears to be poured down, and in all directions indeed it is diffused, yet it is not effused. For this diffusion is extension. Accordingly, its rays are called extensions, because they are extended. But one may judge what kind of a thing a ray is, for if he looks at the sun's light passing through a narrow opening in a darkened room, for it is extended in a right line, as it, it, as it were is divided when it meets with any solid object which falls in the way and intercepts the air beyond. But there the light remains fixed and does not glide or fall off. Such then ought to be the outpouring and diffusion of the understanding. And it should in no way be an effusion, but an extension and it should make no violent or impetuous collision with the objects which are on its way, nor yet fall down, but be fixed, and enlighten that which receives it. For a body will deprive itself of illumination if it does not admit it. Nature uses only the longest threads to weave her patterns, so each small piece of her fabric reveals the organization of the entire tapestry. Inertia originates in a kind of interaction between bodies. The electromagnetic theory is not based on action at a distance as was Newton's. Space is thought of as being threaded throughout with electrical and magnetic tensions. We are led to the conclusion that the invisible we are led to the conclusion that the visible universe and the natural phenomena that we observe are pictures woven on the looms of this invisible universe. Most of us scientists are convinced in our innermost hearts that matter is ultimately of one kind, whatever ideas we have formed as to the nature of the primordial substance. That opinion is not under discussion. Bohr and Heisenberg were separated from Schrodinger by basic philosophical convictions, and they were unable to reach common ground from which to consider the atom. Each of them accepted and used the same body of experimental evidence but they could not agree on the conceptual means to embrace the evidence. Schrodinger looked at the natural world and saw continuity, so he was intellectually offended by energy states and quantum jumps. So there you have it. Great intellectuals from all different backgrounds at all points in history all agree. Matter must be interconnected. Phenomena as simple as gravity, as light, they must be mediated by some extended object 
that connects atoms. It would be impossible for the Earth to pull on the moon or the sun to pull on the Earth or for the light from the sun to travel across nothing and suddenly interact with Earth and cause it to warm up and cause our atoms to move. No, there must be a physical link, a physical nexus between all atoms that mediates light, gravity, electricity, magnetism, and so on. Quantum's idea that atoms are discrete, disconnected, tiny little spheres explains nothing, and it never will explain anything. The only reason that they use these tiny little spheres is because it makes it easier for their mathematical equations to describe. But that doesn't mean that this theory describes reality. They might be able to use the tiny particles to make predictions the way that Ptolemy used to use epicycles to predict the locations of celestial objects. But the fact is that being able to make a prediction alone does not make your theory rational. Many people have been able to make predictions using irrational theories. We have to be able to judge the theory on its own merits. We have to be able to determine if the form is able to even perform the function that is ascribed to it. Behavior must follow with architecture. And this is the entire point of the video. These old master intellectuals understood that behavior follows architecture. And so they understood that if a planet is being moved at a distance, or if light is traveling instantaneously in a straight line, it must be following along some medium. It must be occurring on some physical mechanism. So that's all for this video. Thank you. Oh, and don't forget to visit our Facebook page. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Also, subscribe and like this video if you're um, interested in this kind of rational science. Thanks.